know what I want to do. I know I can speak. I know I can impact lives. Yes, now I'm on the, I know that. Now you go to the, part, to the stage where you have now to invest, to understand it deeper, you know, because now you want to learn more, um, engage more beyond the knowing. You want to practice the making of the bread. You know, you want to, yeah, that stage of practice. And the more you practice, the more you do it, the more it becomes embodied in you, then now you can get to the third stage. And if you skip any stage, you will lose out on the last stage because now you don't have the enough knowledge to be able to make that community, to be able to think beyond, to reinvent, to start thinking outside the box because you missed a stage. So that's why in my engagements and in my discussions with people, always invest in yourself. Don't, if you have a minute on you to invest in you, please do it. Because that investment, five, four years from now, it's going to be immense and it looks small. And now, for example, in the economy we are in right now, having a skill outside your education is paramount, paramount, because the job sector is closing. People are now using machines and computers to do several things that we used to do before. So how are we going to survive? You will survive on your talent and your new skill. So what you do, you use your education. For example, me holding a master's in law and a master's in human resource will not be enough in the near future. Are you going to study all the masters in the world? No. Are you going to be a doctor and doctor and doctor? No. Because there is a time for everything and there's a limit to certain things, for at least for most individuals. So if you have that education, thank God, but how are you going to use that education? How are you going to use those qualifications to accelerate the things that you love doing, to impact the things you love doing? That is your skill and your talent. But first, yeah. you have to identify it. You have to identify what you love doing. So I'll give an example. If I am doing, uh, I love speaking and say I want to be a life and leadership coach. There is no leader in this world that has no life. <laughs> so we start with life. It means that everything you're doing, whatever engagement you're making, must be relating the facts to life. So every leader has a family. How are they managing their family life with leadership in their professional life. You have to speak to someone to understand that what they're going through. You have to solve a problem. Now you have identified you're good at that. You're good when you're talking to people. When I'm talking to Clayton, he's able to listen, to understand, to be immersed in the conversation. It means I am changing a life, I am transforming a life. Now, once you understand that that is your skill, that is your talent, now you must invest in it, in learning it better. Join different academies, join different leadership institutions, join speaking engagements uh, where they are teaching public speaking and speech writing. All those things must be on your resume so that you become an authority. You become authoritative, in, I mean, authentic in terms of what you do. You don't have to think, oh, what am I going to add here? What am I going to do? No. If I want to change people's culture in workplaces, I have to invest in that knowledge because understanding people and managing people is different. And if you do it over and over with that knowledge and then the practice that you put into making sure that knowledge is valuable to you and people around you will help you get into the third stage you mentioned. And then after that, you can build a community because now that community will know, oh, Adele is this. Because I've seen your journey, all from step one of making bread, the last step is a journey. And that journey is visible. You cannot hide it. Yeah. You cannot hide it. It is visible. People are seeing it. And that journey is not a one, a one two months journey. It's a long process. And that's why our generation right now we, we like quick things, and that's why they disappear so fast. 
because we don't like the waiting. We don't like the waiting. Yet, if you talk to every successful transformational person, they have waited. They have invested. They have taken time to master the art. And then they have monetized it to make money to be as successful as they are. But it didn't come from the blue. No. They invested, no, it took the time, learned, and all that it can 10 years, 15 years, and then they are successful. But our generation, we want to wake up at 25. You want the things of a 40 year old person. You don't know how much time they have put in to get to that level. They have taken time. So that process, the four stages you mentioned are paramount if we are going to achieve our goals in this generation. And I want to be a part of that change. I want to be a part of that transformation by sharing myself, sharing my knowledge, and putting myself out there. So by the time I am 45, which is about 10 years from now, plus, I would be to be able to look back and say, I went through all the four stages, and I'm an authority in the community about public speaking and engagement, about leadership, growth, and accountability, about changing human resource to understand their roles in their professional life, about so many things, because you have invested knowledge, you have invested time, and now you can say, I'm ready to monetize it and make money out of it as a living. Why? Uh, and lately I've been thinking a lot about um, this thing we call retirement. Why, um, when you said having these conversations, we speak from the heart on what is happening around us. That's what has been on my mind a lot. Because as you grow, you get into the less risk age where you have to start thinking beyond where you are right now and start thinking 20 years from now, where am I going to be? It is most likely, Clayton, that where you are right now, as active as you are right now, you will not be that active at 60. Impossible. So, when that is the case, what are we going to do? That the decisions we make right now, whatever we invest in right now, has to inform what we want to achieve 20 years from now. Because at 20 years from now, we will not be running around doing the things we're doing right now. Because there's a new generation coming up that will be doing those things. And most likely you'll be a liability at that stage. To most organizations, <laughs> to most spaces, you'll be a liability. So you being a lawyer, yes, with your all qualifications, might not work for you at 60 years old. If that is the case, then investing in your skill, in your talent, in yourself right now is paramount. Because that cannot be taken away from you. Job security is an illusion in this economy we're in and in this business we are in. But investing in your talent, investing in your skill will take you miles because you'll go to the grave with that skill. No one can take it away from you. You can actually build an empire around you. In that old age, you still have these young people working for you to build that empire because you are the business. Your skill is the business. No one can fire you. So that is the journey I am starting. I'm not even 1%. I am just starting right now because I've gotten a, real, a realization right now that look, I'm growing old and 20 years from now, where will I be? And I have children who are young and in 20 years time, they will still be depending on you. So if the economy and the recession are changing the dynamics of the life, how prepared are we going to be? That's how this talent, I, I, I called mom and I said, I think I have something you put in me. It's time to bring it to life. Because this cannot be taken away from me, but a job will be taken away in a space of an eye. So that is the, the journey I am starting. And I want to bring on so many people with me so that we can grow together. And how to do that 
is by putting myself out there. Because just like you said, as you're changing someone's life, you're literally changing your own. You're literally speaking to yourself because you don't have it all figured out. But the more you say it, the more you believe it. That's why they say, fake it until you make it. Because the more you say it, the more you say it, the more you believe it. Like, look, this is actually a possibility. So that's the journey I've started. And I believe um, down the road, five years from now, we'll go back to this conversation and see where we are. Where are we? And I think it will be, it will be amazing to see.